There are a number of methods for controlling an 8x8 RGB matrix with an Arduino and today I'm going to demonstrate a method that makes use of 74HC4052N multiplexers. Using four of these multiplexers, all three colors can be driven from the output of a single MAX7219. This method simplifies the circuit dramatically and is much faster, simpler, more practical, and economic than trying to use multiple MAX 7219 LED display drivers. Now the beauty of the MAX 7219 is that it vastly simplifies controlling an 8x8 matrix, handling the refreshing of the LEDs automatically, thereby eliminating the need to constantly cycle through all of the LEDs to keep them on. Tell the chip what LEDs to illuminate, and it turns them on and keeps them on until instructed otherwise. Now, although the MAC 7219 is great for controlling a single color common cathode 8x8 matrix, it's not designed for use with common anode LED RGB 8x8 matrices. Now, my attempts to connect three cascaded MAC 7219s, one for each color, were unsuccessful, I suspect because the current source outputs from the three chips interfered with each other when connected in parallel to a single common anode on the RGB 8x8 matrix. It can be done by shutting down the two MAX 7219s not currently being addressed, but from what I've seen and read in forum posts, it's difficult to get the timings right and the results tend to be flaky at best. My solution was to use a single MAX 7219 and sequentially multiplex the output to each color in the matrix using four 74HC5052N dual four channel analog multiplexers. Because each chip contains two four channel multiplexers, the eight outputs from the MAC7219 can be multiplexed with four chips. Note that only three of the four outputs are used on each multiplexer, one for each red, green, and blue signal. Controlling the MAC7219 with an Arduino is simple, using Eberhard Afale's excellent LED control library. The library contains functions for controlling individual LEDs, as well as entire rows or columns of LEDs. As I mentioned before, the MAC7219 is designed for use with common cathode devices, and most, if not all, RGB 8x8 matrices are common anode. As a result, the outputs which would normally be connected to the columns are instead connected to the rows and vice versa. Therefore, when using the LED control library, the functions for controlling rows and columns are reversed. A total of five chips are used in this project. A single MAC 7219 serial eight digit LED driver and four 74HC4052N dual four channel analog multiplexers. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the MAC7219, it's a serially driven IC normally used to control common cathode display drivers like seven segment numeric LED displays of up to eight digits, bar graph displays, or 64 individual LEDs. The chip includes an 8x8 static RAM that stores each digit. Only one external resistor is required to set the current for all connected LEDs. The 74HC4052N is a dual four channel analog multiplexer with common select logic. Each multiplexer has four independent outputs and a common input. The common channel select logic includes two digital select inputs. By setting the two select inputs to one of four possible binary states, the common input is connected with one of the four outputs. The circuit diagram is reasonably simple, although it did prove somewhat difficult to diagram in an easily understood fashion. The Arduino is connected to the MAC7219 using the data in, load, and clock pins, 
and two additional Arduino pins are connected to each of the four 74HC4052N's select logic pins. The MAC7219's eight segment outputs are connected directly to the RGB 8x8 matrix's eight common anode inputs, and each of the MAC7219's eight digit outputs are connected to an input on one of the four channel multiplexers. Each of the eight multiplexers output zero pins is connected to its corresponding red input pin on the RGB matrix, each output one pin to its green input pin, and each output two to its blue input pin. Appropriate VCC and ground connections are made to each multiplexer chip, including forcing the input enable pin on each multiplexer low by connecting at the ground, thus allowing the output channel to be selected by setting the state of the two select logic pins. A 10K ohm resistor needs to be in place between the ISET and VCC on the MAC7219 as well to regulate the current supplied to the LEDs. Note that failure to include this resistor has the potential to damage your MAC7219 and or your LED matrix, so be sure and include it. Note that both the datasheet for the MAC7219 and the documentation for the LED control library recommend connecting a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and a tenth of a microfarad ceramic capacitor between V plus and ground as close to the device as possible to minimize power supply ripple due to the peak digit driver currents. But I've had this project running non-stop 24 seven for over four weeks with only the tenth of a microfarad ceramic capacitor and it's functioned perfectly. If you have issues with the MAC7219 acting flaky, you may need to add the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor to make it function properly. The code for this project is actually amazingly simple. Uh, control of the Mac 7219s handled with Eberhard Fala's excellent LED control library. The multiplexers are controlled with two of the Arduino's digital I.O. pins. I used pins 8 and 9, but any pins could be used. Uh, basic flow gr program flow, uh, the 8x8 font for the characters is stored in the Arduino's flash RAM to conserve program space and allow enough extra RAM to be available for the program itself to run and that's why you see this include right here and this is actually the table for the font itself which is stored in flash RAM on the Arduino. Now each character stored is two 32-bit unsigned integers and when the programs executed the ASCII value for each character in the message string array is determined, the binary 8x8 font for that character looked up and stored in an array called screen. I do do some limited kerning to trim off extra empty columns and make the scrolling text a little more compact. Now, After the entire string has been translated into the array, the screen array, the program randomly chooses a color by setting a brightness for the indi individual red, green, and blue components, and then it just loops through the screen array in columns of eight, offsetting the display window by a single column with each loop. The display window subroutine handles this, the output of the window to the RGB matrix. Each column is displayed three times once for each RGB component and brightness level with I.O. pins 8 and 9 used to consecutively switch the output from the MAC 7219 to the red, green, and blue LEDs. After it's complete, it's run the whole string across the display. It then starts again, filling the screen array with the contents of message string. This allows the message to be changed after each message is displayed, although this particular program doesn't demonstrate that capability. The only other library that's included is the LED control library. I've already talked here about the font array. There are some simple variables declared, uh, the screen array itself, a few program control variables. This is the 
instance declaration uh, for the LED control library itself that uses pins 12, 11, and 10 to control data in, clock, and the load pins on the Mac 7219. And as I mentioned before, 9 and 8 are used to control the uh, data select pins on the multiplexers. A few simple variable declarations for clarity and an array for the brightness of each color. And message string itself is the string that's going to be displayed. The setup routine does nothing more than, de than declare the output pins, wake up the Mac 7219 and clear the display. This load message array actually reads each of these characters in message string and generates the the columns that will be displayed uh, by the final section of the program and then the program itself does nothing more than scroll through the screen array in columns of eight displaying the columns it loops through eight times once for each column sends it to the display notice that set row is used and not set column because as I mentioned earlier I'm using the Mac 7219's outputs in reverse what would normally be connected to a common cathode is connected to common anode so the columns and rows are reversed it displays the red sets the brightness for red delays three milliseconds then switches it to the green sets that brightness delays for three milliseconds and displays the blue and this time the delay is only two seconds because of the extra time that it takes when it loops back around to change to the next column and it runs through the entire array and when it's done it just starts all over and that's all there is to it as always I hope this video helped you learn a new way you can use your Arduino demonstrated how easy it is to combine an Arduino and other hardware to make something unique and wonderful. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more similar videos from me featuring the incredible ways you can utilize your Arduino.